everyone, and welcome to our MetaPower Love MetaPower Hour. Today is February 13th, and we wanted to spend just a little bit of time talking about some of the key topics that we've been going over in the last week. And I am joined by two lovely ladies, Robin Cox and Dana Worthington, who are on my teams um, with doTERRA. And so we wanted to just spend a little bit of time offering to you some additional insights and our thoughts about topics that we've covered over the last week. We hope that you've been joining us and really enjoying um, learning these simple, easy, stackable habits, right? And if you haven't taken on everything, that's totally okay. But continue to watch the videos and think about what is the next thing I can do to help me along my wellness journey. So ladies, welcome. I'm so excited to be with you tonight. Um, let's just dive right in. One of the key things we've been talking about overall is nutrition. And there's many different components to that. One of them being a healthy digestive system. And this week's video talks primarily about chewing your food. And I can attest to being a busy mom and entrepreneur, how quickly I can go through my meals sometimes if I'm not paying attention. So why don't we just kick off Dana, share with us why is it so important to have a healthy digestive system? Well, I know for me, one thing is if you, if you don't digest your food properly, obviously you're not gonna get the nutrients you need. But then also you may have problems if your intestinal tract isn't sealed up tight. So if your food isn't able to go all the way through, you'll have whole food molecules out into your blood. And that's where you see a lot of food sensitivity and even food allergy problems arise. And going back to chewing your food, that's the first step in the digestive process. So you've got all the enzymes in the mouth. And if you, like I say, hork down your food, <laughs> um, it goes down whole and then your stomach has to work harder. If you don't have enough stomach acid, then, you know, that just exaggerates the problem. So it is a good process. And I know for me in one of the posts I had put down, it really helps our family if we start our meal with prayer because it kind of calms us down, centered, centers us, and helps us to not hork down our food so fast. Right. And like, just keeping in mind something basic, which we kind of forget, our stomachs do not have teeth, right? So how critically important is it for us to chew? And I remember growing up, someone saying, well, you should chew your food at least a hundred times, right? So this might sound yucky, but the idea is you, if you can get your food almost close to that meshy kind of like thinking back to baby food, that might not be an ideal scenario to think about in your mind as an adult. But the reality is that helps, like Dana's saying, allow your your stomach not to have to overwork and create all those other symptoms that come with not proper digestion like bloating and inflammation in your body um having the um, acid reflux and all of those things right so just another way to kind of help Robin, you want to add anything to that um i mean she pretty much said what i was going to say um if you are speeding through your meal your body just doesn't have time to enjoy the food and you you may actually miss the signal that you're full um because it takes about 20 minutes for your stomach to tell your brain that it's full so mm -hmm. you may unintentionally under eat or overeat um if you just don't take time to to really process it and be present in the the space of your eating you know yeah. um that's a really good point robin so talk some more about tips or things that you would consider for mindful eating. That was one of the other key elements that we talked about this week. Um, stay off your phone, um, especially if you're eating by yourself. Like, you know, sometimes moms, when the kids are gone, we'll just stand at the counter and just shove some food in our mouth real quick. But just take some time to really put together a meal and just sit down and enjoy it. You know, look at the food on your plate, maybe cut it up in a certain number of pieces so that, you know, something to keep your mind on your food mm -hmm. so instead of just wolfing it down um you know you actually participate in the eating process so engage so there's your some mind. value in like really savoring what you're eating and like right. actually not just as tina said hawking it down you're actually enjoying the meal and i think we've gotten away from that in our society mm -hmm. knowing that like our 
schedules are so tight and so busy and we're sort of right. trying to cram a lot into a little bit. And one of the key things that ends up suffering is meal time with our families, right? If we're mm-hmm. rushing through, um, but also just the idea of enjoying a meal. And everyone can go back to that moment when either you are with family or you were at a holiday party or you were with your girlfriends and you actually sat down and had a meal for a couple of hours. And what that experience was like, because it didn't just include enjoying the meal, it was fellow shipping and having conversation and laughing and joking and so we just want to get back in touch with some of those kind of basic things that are really um important to us when it comes to eating um so let's also talk about another tip that was offered this week and a challenge to consider was um using a food journal so dana can you talk about whether you or clients have used a food journal how you have found it being beneficial to your clients and um what are some of the um tips that you would offer for going through an exercise like that you know and i didn't do like a first food journal this go around but i've done food journals quite often in the past and i do have um, a little health journal that i started um last fall and so if there's something that kind of comes up strange for me i'll go back and in retrospect and kind of go through what I've eaten the day before, maybe a couple days before to see if there was something that really was an outlier to my normal diet. If I felt like I had some negative um, kind of impact from what I've eaten possibly. And so that's how I've recently been using it. But um, I did go through a period of time where I was trying to narrow down some food sensitivities. And so I was logging all my food. And then um, a couple other times I've done kind of low carb type eating style and so in order to get a really good grip on that you really have to count your food so you know measuring your protein out measuring your fat out because if you eat too much protein and you're trying to move towards um, keto then the protein actually can undermine what you're doing and also sneaky little carbs that you didn't think you really were having that much but well you ate that extra cherry tomato And then you ate that extra carrot and, you know, those things do add up if you eat too many of them. So um, things really sneak in. And when you're writing them down, you're like, oh, that's what happened to my day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it kind of keeps you honest. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Um, So a couple of things that that Dana said that I think are important is one is sort of using this process as an opportunity to determine how food is actually affecting your body so you may not go all the way to the degree of writing your portions down for the different food um, segments but knowing what you ate and then thinking through like how two things how am I feeling emotionally after having this meal and then secondarily how is my body feeling after having this meal and there's something to consider considering reflecting on your meal kind of immediately and then maybe within a couple hours after right because your body at that point is beginning to kind of completely start the finishing or attempt to finish the digestion process right so you've got to give your body time to kind of be like oh there's food in my body what do I need to do with this and how am I going to use it and then you might just begin to notice if certain things bother you one thing I learned paying attention to food and I wasn't necessarily journaling but just like was consciously thinking about every day what I was eating is I realized I can I can even to this day I can't eat granola on an empty stomach whatever the combination in at that point I was making granola myself But whatever the combination was, it was like really irritating my stomach and creating a lot of acid. And it like took a little bit to kind of figure out, oh, eating this raw for whatever reason, the combination of all the, you know, together, my body just wasn't accepting that. So it's a good, you know, it's a good tip to have that you can utilize to to get more information. Um, I want to switch and invite Robin back into the conversation. Um, Part of what we've been talking about through this challenge is to make sure you're doing a few things every day consistently. One is taking your um, lifelong diet vitality, um, which is the the vitamin pack with the enzymes and the omegas, um, but also taking your MetaPower and using that customized to how your body would use it. So whether that's the oil or the collagen or the assist, and then also um, getting that 30, 30 minutes of movement, right? So those are kind of the foundational components that we've been asking everyone to pay attention to. But this week we started to talk about some of the other products that um, we have available that can assist with a healthy um, or metabolic health more broadly. So do you mind talking a little bit about your experience with Digestine, 
uh, sorry, not digestive, digest Zen or Terrazyme or PB Assist, whichever one you want to pick. Yeah, sorry. Um, I don't know if you can hear, I have a repairman in the house, but apologize. Um, my primary go-to is Terrazyme. Um, I take them all the time. Um, I'm coming off of having um, an IBS type of gut. It's drastically improved, um, but I still really lean on Terrazyme for a lot of help, especially if I'm eating out or um, just out of the house in general. The, um, the Terrazyme just really kind of calms everything down and just gives me an added boost in digesting my food. And um, it also helps with other um, repairing of your skin tissues and helping to clean out excess toxins and whatever or not. So um, I really love the Terrazyme. I carry it with me with a little, um, you know, those little Tylenol capsule things. They're like that big and, and they have a push down cap when you turn. So I have an empty one of those and I can fit nine Terrazyme things in there. So those are in my purse all the time. Um, I also like the, pre the PB cyst and the Digest Zen. They're all really good for purposes. Um, the PB Assist, I kind of go on a week, off a week, um, just to try and not maybe overload my body with just those specific probiotics, but I do find that they do help when I'm on them. And then when I go off, um, by the end of that week, I can, I feel like I need to go back on them. Probably too much sugar still, even though I'm taking my MetaPower every single day, I'm trying, it's a struggle. Um, but, the Terrazyme really helps calm that stuff down too. So those are my faves. Yeah, Dana, do you mind talking a little bit about, cause it's also part of um, a promotion for this month when you place your order um, and you actually have about 48 hours left um, to take advantage of this. Talk a little bit about the Digest Zen soft gels and the tabs and how you've used them or worked with your clients to use them and how it's helped them. So I'm kind of like Robin, I have an empty little tiny prescription bottle <laughs> and I layer it. So I have Terrazyme and the Digestin soft gels in it and I keep them in my purse. And so like when we're out to eat, I just take them. Like I take a Terrazyme and a Digestin soft gel before we even eat because it just makes my life better. You don't know what's in your food and you want to be able to enjoy going out. I mean, for me, going out is socializing. And so it's important that I'm able to eat something. <laughs> even even healthy choices aren't always healthy when we go out to eat. So um, and then the digest and oil I also keep in my keychain. So I've got like a little keychain with sample bottle size or um, they're like these I'll show you little tiny and they fit in a in a little clip-on bag. I keep that in my purse. And the, so the digest and oil, um, my husband, that's what made him a believer in oils because he was having like severe digestive issues. And later he ended up having his gallbladder out. But at four o'clock in the morning, it woke him up every day at 4.00 every morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he could take the digest and under his tongue and then rub some on his belly and he would be able to go back to sleep. And then also, I know this month is the fennel promo, the free product of the month if you do your 125 order before the 15th. So yeah, we're like, you better do it today or tomorrow. But the fennel um, is amazing. Like if you feel, I call it vapor locked. So like you can't make gas go up or down and you just feel like swollen. Um, fennel will release that so quick. And I've helped so many people with that alone with the fennel. So those are my favorites about those products. Yeah, yeah. So just to reiterate, like the um, the Terrazyme is really great because it's an um, enzyme that helps to break down your food. And so I just want to mention because we may not have talked about this um, yet in the Meta Power Love. If you are also taking the um, Meta Meta Power Assist, you don't want to take the Terrazyme at the same time with that. You want to separate those two. The recommendation is that you have at least two hours between the two. So some folks suggest taking the assist 
before your biggest meal and then taking some Terrazyme a couple hours after. Still have the benefit of helping to break down the food, but you don't want those because they're doing very similar processes. You don't want them to compete in your body or to cancel each other, the effectiveness of each other's out. So that's just one thing to know. Um, the probiotic is, I'm sorry, the PB Assist is our probiotic. And what's really great about them is I describe it this way, it's double capsuled. So a lot of probiotics don't actually get down into the gut where it needs to be. Ours is designed so that there's um, an inner layer where the probiotics exist. And that way that outer layer can kind of dissolve a bit in your belly and then where you need the probiotic it can get there in the delivery system that we've created through the um, PB assist and then similarly with the digestion I also keep it in my bag it's super important because my son has a tendency to get a little bit of car sickness especially if he's like trying to snack right after school because he's hungry and he may not have eaten his lunch right and I need to offer him a little bit of something but just being in the motion of the car and all that stuff um it's really important for him to to have something but if he's feeling a little queasy i just give him a couple drops on his on his hand and rub it in and he's feeling so so great after about 10 minutes so that's really helpful to have on hand um okay just gonna take a couple minutes let's talk about sleep ladies i think we all probably can benefit from more sleep and i will admit i am a night owl there's a variety of reasons for that um but let's talk about the connection between sleep and having good metabolic health, particularly with the digestive system. And what are some tips or tools that you would suggest to help our community get more sleep? How do we get more sleep? Robin, you want to start? Yeah, um, sleep is so important. It's when our bodies actually repair. So if you were having some issues like your husband, Dana, waking up every morning at four o'clock, um, our bodies are set to a repair clock. So if you look on the Chinese medicine the body clock system, if you're repeatedly waking up at a certain time of night, chances are you may have something wrong with that specific organ in your body. So it's very vital that we sleep all night so those organs can repair. Sometimes we just get strung out and stressed and our mind is racing and we just cannot shut it down. Sometimes we just have trouble staying asleep and we have bad dreams or you know, something wakes us up every night like me with three cats um and your mind turns on and you can't go back to sleep um doTERRA has some really good powerful things to help you sleep there's serenity there's copaiba there's adaptive there's um lavender there's um chamomile there's um i mean dana you could probably rattle off five more um the point is Sleep is so important. It's really one of the foundations of good metabolic health because without it, our bodies don't repair. They don't get what they need in order to do their job optimally. So if you're having trouble sleeping, hit us up and we'll come up with some ideas for you. So, um, Dana, yeah, that's you great. From here. Yeah, and Dana can step in. But I wanted to say that, like, I love all the oils that Robin listed out, and there's a few ways that you can use them, right? Um, I use a lot of those oils consistently on my son to help him at night, A, to get to sleep faster and have more restful sleep, right? That's important. It's not just critical to go to sleep, but have get down into your REM sleep, right? That really good restful sleep for your body, as Robin referenced, so that your body can go and do what it wants to do, which is repair. So think about using those oils um the blends or the individual oils um, on the bottom of your feet along the spine or diffusing in the room i start my son's diffuser about 30 minutes before he goes to sleep so when he walks in there he's kind of getting the sensation of everything that i put into his diffuser and we have some really cute ones he's loving the training that we had from the holiday season so dana what else would you like to add about getting good sleep um i kind of like with robin there's so many things that can disrupt your sleep and what I kind of tell people is sometimes what worked in the past <laughs> will stop working. And it's not because it actually stopped working, but your body changed. And so now you need something different. So don't be afraid to switch things up. And we're all guilty. We just want to do what worked, but now it doesn't work. And then you think, oh, well, I just gonna need to go try something new. Well, you do, but not, there's lots of oils, lots of protocols. And also like what Robin said, um, for me, hormone imbalance has been a huge factor in um you know my sleep patterns so and i say hormone broadly i mean every process in our body is regulated by some kind of hormone so 
um, whether it might be female hormones, it could be thyroid hormones. And I have both of those issues off and on, and they, they take turns sometimes. They come together. Um, lack of sunlight, those are all things. So um, going to bed at a set time also is helpful. And like for me, um, I used to burn the candle at both ends. So I was a night owl and an early bird, and now I'm neither. <laughs> But I do find if I can get into the bed by 10 and shut the light off by 1030, and then I have these blue light filtering glasses so my screen time isn't keeping that bright light in my eyes after it's dark, um, keeping the bedroom cooler so you're not sleeping too hot. And um, I don't know, those are just a few things that have really kind of helped me. And then I'm playing around with some extra stuff like castor oil packs. So because that helps your organs detox a little easier. Um, gallbladder, liver um, usually happens between, you know, that midnight to four. And, and there's a lot of things that play into that. I mean, there's other organs too, but those are some of your detox organs and your kidneys play in there as well. But um, anyway, so be, be mindful that maybe what worked before and it stops working, it's not because it really stopped working, your body just changed. Yeah, that's all really super great tips. Well, thank you, ladies. I'm so happy we had a chance to chat. Um, just real quickly, want to just reemphasize some of the things we talked about. Certainly how important it is to overall be thinking about healthy digestion for your body and the things that you can do to, to support that, particularly slowing down, chewing your food and enjoying it, right? Um, and setting other attempts at mindful eating, right? So not eating in front of the TV, maybe you know, having some way to center your family. That could be prayer, as Dana suggested. Um, using a food journal to just look at maybe for a couple of weeks, what is it that I'm eating? How is my body responding? Do I feel more energized? Do I feel tired? Am I having sugar crashes? Am I having bloating or any kind of inflammation in my system? Um, think about smart supplementation, right? We have great food available to us, but it doesn't necessarily meet all of our nutrition needs. And so there's deficits. And so we have resources available to support the system and help fill those gaps in addition to your LLV and your MetaPower system. Um, and then we talked about some really great sleep habits. So making sure that you have a consistent wake up and I'm going to bedtime, kind of quieting your space. Maybe you want to use music. Perhaps you're someone that really enjoys meditation. You can do that for 15 minutes. Um, just creating a space that is inviting and conducive for you to actually go to sleep. And then I think one of the main things is try to minimize anything that you're going to eat at least three hours before so that your body has a chance to start to shut down and not be trying to process a heavy meal right before you're going to sleep. So hopefully this is super helpful for you, gives you some reminders and again, some simple things that you can do along your wellness journey. We thank you so much for joining us. And if you have questions, put them in the comments below and part of the team will be able to respond to you and provide you with other assistance. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Robin, for all your insight. And we look forward to seeing you next week in our um, next installment of MetaPower Hour.